going down into the, uh, the, the uh, nerve center of Electric Randy Land, which is the studio downstairs where I have a uh, working studio in the basement. This, this pile of stuff here is Carmine Apice's drum solo from the Vanilla Fudge. I'm, I'm thinking of selling it um, with Carmine's blessing. I bought it from him. I bought all the fudge stuff, guitars and amps and stuff like that. <laughs> This is the nerve center of the recording studio. This is, this is my crack team, part of my crack team in here. This is Josh Barrow, Ace Studio producer and engineer. How you doing there, Josh? Slaving away. Yeah, what are you working on, the new Cactus album? New Cactus album. All right, can you play a little bit of that? Place a, place a few beats. <laughs> Making a stem for jam. I guess I should play some of Anything. That first song, maybe. Whatever's easy. This is a first first glimpse of the new Cactus album. Uh... talking about all rehearsed done in here. Um, Mike and I came up with the idea of painting everything green so we could do videos in here and uh, I'm really looking forward to doing that with Rickety. We did, we did some before when we were just getting started, just test videos and you can put any kind of backgrounds in, you know, and it looks like a great 70s TV show. That piano will never leave this room. I bought a $50,000 Steinway Grand. My engineer had world-class ears. He went to the studio and picked the best one out that they had there. We brought it to the house and we knew we wanted to put it in the studio. We tried to, they, they had these five, four big muscular black guys came in here. They looked like macho moving guys. And they came in to try to get it down the stairs. It was this far off the mark, we couldn't get it down. So they said, I was working and I had construction workers in the house at the time. So the guy said, oh my God, we'll have to pull the stairs out. And the guy said, so the mover said, okay, we'll come back at nine o'clock when we get off work and we'll try again. So they came back at nine o'clock, drunk as skunks, with the stairway pulled out and they pulled the thing down. And I remember staring there going like, like under the thing going like, these guys are gonna drop the piano and it's gonna be splinters all over the floor or it's gonna crush me here. The piano came down, I swear to God, there was this much room on either side of the piano to get the piano down here, and now the stairs are back in. No way it's ever getting out of here. That's it. It goes with the house. 
Yeah, let, me bring, let me bring a couple of outrageous guitars out here. These are the ones I used to play, six string. I might go back to six string someday. These are both one of a kind, Fleischmann and Federa. I didn't put knobs in my basses. They have, of course, to say they say that sound is better if there's nothing in the way of between the, uh, the, you know, the pickup and the, and the amp. So I didn't have volume or tone knobs in my instruments. And what is it? What do you think of that hairdo? That's a mancoon with a with a lion cut. They call that that's their summer hairdo. <laughs> and go. That's Mark Stein's organ. Vanilla Fudge keyboard player Mark Stein. Played that organ and all through the fudge. He told me a story that he, he remembers Jim Morrison leaning on that thing at one festival they played together and Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix all, all touched it. <laughs> but they, right. If you come right up to the end where it says Sound Avenue and the entrance is right there, it's like the same driveway. Went to his okay. wife on the shot of his life. The artist who did that stuff, I found out later in life's name, was Norm Saunders. He also did the Civil War cards. And he, what he also did was men's magazine covers, these raunchy kind of erotic men's magazine covers uh, before the, everything was done with photographs, you know, they used to have some kind of painted sleazy artwork. And I got a collection of that stuff from his son who I tracked down when I, when I, um, I met him in the city, when I worked in the Forbidden Planet in the city back in the 80s. And I just kept harassing him and we finally became friends and he sold me a bunch of his dad's artwork. Nobody, this stuff wasn't that well known really, except by some kind of oddball collectors until places like the New York Times started calling him a genius and then big coffee table books have come out about him. Uh, and I, so now my stuff, this is one of the best investments I ever made. And now this stuff is like considered really good art and I'm gonna show you some of it right now. And my name is Tommy Marr. So Mars attacked. Oh, yes. Let's go. Mars attacked my house today. <laughs> Wait, we could just come down this hall. I think. Hold on. Yes. Ooh, look at this one. What do we get? This is all Norm Saunders artwork in here from his oh, magazine covers. And this is my this is my girl Cream Puff. She's my latest addition to my menagerie of superstars in the house. She's a superstar of the feline world. Mm. Mm. Somebody was gonna throw her away when they wow. moved away, and I said, "Give me that thing." Beautiful eyes. <laughs> Beautiful eyes. Cream Puff. Cream Puff. Yeah, these are all, you know, they would say like men's adventure here or something like that, you know, or, or ma true, true ma male, male adventure, you know. But you can see like, uh, who is that? Uh, the uh, red-haired actress uh, from... Uh, Rita Hurt, hey, what? No, no, from uh, Elvis movies and stuff. Oh, and... Ma and Margaret. Uh, you can see Marilyn Monroe here and there. That was definitely a Marilyn Monroe one there. <laughs> You know, you got these girls with 60s hairdos uh, in stockings and garters being tortured by the Nazis. I remember seeing that cover. I used to sneak away from my mother and, and when I'd go get comic books back in like 62, 61, and I just, they, these things would be yeah. out on the shelves. This is more unpolitically correct than hardcore porn now. <laughs> They're mixing the Nazis and sex. I mean, it's like, you know, that, that, that's, that, that would never go down anywhere now. You this, know? Look at this one, yeah. Yeah. But that, now he did a par portrait of my wife and I. There. His son did a portrait of my wife and I in the mode of the, uh, of this. The, dipping the girls in gold was a theme, and a lot of that, that was repeated a lot. And I remember that cover as a kid. I go, boy, the Nazis didn't like girls. <laughs> 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 but you notice the hair doesn't even get melted off when they when they put on the bathing suit when they go in the. Uh... This is amazing. This is actually ama really amazing. Yeah, this one. 
cool. I love Arm. Looks like Jack Nicholson. Yeah. That was, I think that was Norm. Norm put himself in a lot of these things. You know, I think that, that was what, that, what Norm's face is in a lot of these. Ah. And, and my, my buddy Dave said he remembers these girls coming to the house and, and posing for these things. Good I'm childhood. Never to forget, man. I love this one. Two, two armbands, you know, like, like, it's like the armband on a naked arm. I mean, you know, they have the mixed up, the uniforms mixed up wrong, but it's all uh, basically the theme of humiliating these poor women. Hmm. Looks like uh, Heather Lockley on this one. Yeah. Wow. This is the uh, Mars Attacks bathroom in here. You can go on in there, some good stuff in there actually. I'll close this door. Got the same, the same blind that the original owner of the house had. All the paint I put in the walls. <laughs> Got the torture room. Take a picture of yourself, Thomas. Who's that guy with the camera? Who is that guy? <laughs> This is amazing, amazing. Beautiful work. Brandy only did that. I love stuff. Man. This is my my own girlfriend here, so I like this painting and me with the with the uh I actually love that painting. I used to dress up like the Joker. I mean, dye my hair green and tease it up and I had the purple tails and, and the <laughs> spats and the orange vest and everything. See, I love it. See, that's, that's the imagination thing. That's what makes a, sh a difference Don't. between a show and a... Yeah. Uh, this was when we worked in the burlesque show in the city. Right? I told him to shoot time. that one. I like that, that one. That was a girl that I used to perform with in the burlesque. Really? Yeah, she was... Um, um, I like her form. <laughs> world famous Bob was her name. Yes. Bob? Yes. That's she, she's doing a little Bob in there. <laughs> Uh -oh. Did we lose time? Nope, we're good. Well, I just got to get this cat. She fights with the other cats. What about the oh, Ampro? My cream puff escaped, I think. I'll, I'll look around. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, that's not the white one? The white is white, all white. Like a fight, which will attack that one. I will look. I will I'll, I'll finish. I'll I think she got it. Maybe she didn't even watch. Watch, 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 watch. Sorry, sorry. You got it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. This is the original Malibu pencil. Tell me, talk. Look at this. Is this amazing? This is like. Uh, this is how I dream most evenings. All right, she's okay. She's in here. Oh. This is most of my dreams right here. See? I'm in my dream. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. Oh. Now I'm coming into my psychedelic dream. The, okay. The Martians well, are here. You guys ready? Another one of my big, great passions is squirrels. I love squirrels. And I had these two display kits. I saw a little squirrel on the floor before. Oh, my. I, I had a squirrel. I love that chair, Tim. That is very good. That, that's some more of Norm Saunders art. This, this is actually original artwork from uh, Mars Attacks. It's not too the light died on that one, though. Yeah, I forgot. You won't be able to see it. It's no squirrel up there, right? You'll see squirrel paintings all over the house. <laughs> Look, here's, a whole, here's a whole chair full of squirrel uh, stuffed squirrels. Oh, here. <laughs> Tommy, get the squirrels. It's the squirrel chair. Rock and roll squirrel chair. I got this one in Finland. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Very cool one stuff. One more famous squirrels. Rocky. Rocky. There you go. Follow us on this tour. You're, you're, you're going to be amazed. Amazed. We haven't even started. There's a squirrel wall. 
screw wall. Kind of call that this is an electric Randy Land. It's really not, not so much a home anymore as a barracks for wayward rock stars. Remember the Abbott and Costello where they had the uh, home for retired rock, for retired yes uh, what was it retired actors or something like that. Well, yes. this, this, this is the home. This is the home for uh, for um, unreti unretiring wayward rock stars from this from the old days. And so people stay here. You know, Jim McCarty sleeps in here when he comes and records and stuff. Now, this yeah. is Jeff Beck's amplifier from Beck Bogart and a Piece. It has Beck Bogart and a Piece stenciled on the back. I bought that from Carmine. Um, and this is a, a. This is one of my two Rickenbacker transonics that were played by uh, Led Zeppelin on their first tour of America. I have the authentic, authentic, authenticity document <laughs> up there. I bought those before people really started to collect stuff like that. Back in the mid '80s, uh, from I, I, just, I said I wanted to get some of these old customs. I, I loved these from when I was a kid. I had the catalog, and these these amps are just so kooky looking. And then yeah. we have so I started, I started to look for. All, then I said, you know what? I'd love to have a room full of refrigerator-sized dinosaur transistor amplifiers that nobody wants. But they, you know, this was like buildings. It's the same way. And in, right. in the old days, every building was different. Right. Then all of a sudden, they all became the same, you know, like these big blocks. Glass. Same thing happened to amplifiers. Well, it makes more sense to just make them square with 412s, and everything's the same. So in these days, they were trying to figure out what, what was the right way to do it, you know. So every, every amp company had a whole different concept of how to, how to use, make an amp look. I mean, this was obviously influenced by the Super Beetle amp, but, but it looks like a Jetsons version of the Super Beetle kind of, and it has like a... The speakers were a bellows that blew air up through vents, and it's up here to cool the I air have to, off. I have to get over here and touch this, though, because oh, yeah. as, as everybody that knows me knows, Zeppelin is my by far favorite band in the world. So this is actually Led Zeppelin's first on the first tour. First tour. The first tour of first America. Tour of America. First, only, only tour they ever and used them. They, in. they got an endorsement from Rickenbacker, a new amp. They tried them out. They used them to hate wow. them, but they used them. And they used them to record the second album with. Uh, I have photographs in, in the other room where they have the other record backer of Jimmy Page recording uh, the second album on the road. They recorded the second album on the road with these Rickenbackers. So here's these pictures of them at the Fillmore with a with three of these Rickenbackers each. Wow. And then here they are out in California, like the whiskey or something with the Rickenbackers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Jimmy's using a Telecaster there. And, that, and this is uh, Beth. Beck Bogart and a piece up here. Right there's Tim Bogart's bass like on that wall over there. Hey Tim, That's I haven't seen Tim in a while. That's the famous bass he used out in the, in the in the last couple of Fudge albums. All the Cactus stuff and Beck Bogart and a piece. That's Vinnie Martell's album, uh, Red Gibson there on the right there. That Red Gibson, a uh, hollow body he used out on the first Vanilla yeah. Fudge album. So a this was on out. the first. In '67? No, yes, that was, and then wow. that, and that that was that was what that that changed my whole life. That well, album. the, the uh, Les Paul he used on the last two, and there's a picture of him up there playing with the, with the fudge with that guitar. I have to get a picture of him with the other one. Tim gave me all of his uh, backstage passes for Cactus and Bella Fudge up there from a friend and all and thing. And I have a little testimonial from each guy, you know, writing about about the guitars. That's that's Bootsy's bass, uh, and there's a picture of me with Bootsy there. There's um, Sir Lord Baltimore's guitar. There, there, there's Louis Domber from Sir Lord Baltimore playing that guitar. Wow. That is... Oof. And who's this? That uh, blue bass uh, Glenn Hughes gave me. Uh, I can get the camera on it. Yeah, Tommy, like it. Swing that blue bass is... Uh, uh, Glenn Hughes recorded an album called Fused with Tony Iommi and uh, Soul Mover. Uh, those two records were recorded with that bass. That's a signature bass that was made for him. I toured with him with the Lizards and, and he gave me that. Wow. And then that's Pat Travers, famous uh, oh. melody maker there. He used that on, uh, it's on the cover of a bunch of his records, including the live album. And, uh, he's he's yeah, phenomenal. He, so. uh, we, the, the Cactus was just playing out in the Midwest and, the, and we, uh, 
we ran, we arranged it to run into the Pat Travers band at a toll booth, and we both got and took pictures of the two bands together. Well, I remember, I remember a, a few years back, the, they they opened for the Fudge at Jones Beach. Oh, cool! Yeah. And and he, I'll tell you, it was sad because He's awesome. it was, you know it was they, they they went on like six o'clock and there wasn't that many people there. But let me tell you something, that stage exploded. That's Tony Franklin's bass to the right there. He used that in The Firm and Blue Murder with Carmine. Hmm. This is Randy Holden's amp and Stratocaster. This is the inspiration for that book, Lucifer. Randy Holden. That's him playing the Crater Festival in, in Hawaii in 1970 with this guitar and one of these amps. He had uh, 16 of those amps behind him when he played. They only made this amp for one year. It's a 1968 Stratocaster, and it's uh, wow. there. He is playing through through a wall of those things. <laughs> that was a, a unique amazing. sound for him. An amazing room right here. Let me tell you something. That's my yeah. first bass. Baldwin. This is Carmine's belt. He, he wears this, and you can see it on the back cover of the third Cactus album. I wear it sometimes now. It doesn't fit Carmine anymore. But, uh, <laughs> They didn't make band t-shirts until much later than this. This is a 1973, you know, uh, uh, what do they call that? That kind of uh, t-shirt they make with the silk screen t-shirt. I mean, that that was an I guess an official, you know, t-shirt for that gig or something. But uh, you know, these were these were Rusty Day's boots. Uh, the singer from Cactus. They kind of like my boots. James Brown over there. It's still sounding good there. Yeah, God, I love James Brown. Me too. Mm -hmm. I have a James Brown voice. Do you? That's, oh, yeah. that's, that's not bad. <laughs> and that's my kind of voice. How was that, that folks? Was that an amazing that. tour right there? We're moving on. I will oh. get a... Uh, oh, I should... Uh, what, the lizards were... Is that... <laughs> it, it, it picks you up great without it. it did? Yeah, no, whatever no, you want to do, this is good too. Shows, oh, yeah, I just want to show you some, I got some pictures here of uh, the lizards jamming with, uh, with Robert Plant on stage and uh, a surprise visit. Robert Plant, um, you know, opened for the Vanilla Fudge on his first tour of America when, in Led Zeppelin. And that was when uh, Tim got sick, right? Tim got a little sick, but we used yeah. to do a thing with the two bands where we would, we would jam with the lizards and, and the fudge uh, at the end of the fudge set. So we just we would do a cactus song. And from what I was told... And check this out. Robert Plant knew the cactus version of Parchment Farm. He knew the... And, and, there's, and I didn't realize it at the time, but there's no... That's completely different from any other version of that song. He really? knew it. He, so, I mean, they were... They, from what I was told about that, was he, he didn't even know. He was just driving by. He, come, he saw that the photo was playing, and so he came in and he hung out. I, my friend, I'm working in the, in the... I'm sitting in the dressing room just getting ready to go on, and my... my crew chief comes in and goes, there's somebody here to see you. And Robert Plant came in and oh my, my head God. got kind of like cotton. Like, is, is this really <laughs> happening? And he just said, hey, how you doing? And he just talking and talking and I'm talking not, and like, talking about like the town and everything. And I, and I was trying to think of a, cool, a couple of cool things to say to him. <laughs> and, and then I, I, we, you know, we, we played our set and I was upstairs and I got to peel off a, a, a poster. And, you know, this is the poster from the gig here from the town. Just to, yeah. you know, and, and Pat comes out and he goes, Tim's sick, we got to go jam. And we're sitting backstage, and we're all in a circle, and, and, and go, what should we do? And, and I'm looking around, and, and, and Robert Plant's there, too, going like, um, and, goes, and Carmine goes, you know Parchment Farm? And he goes, yeah. So we go on stage, and we do it, man, and he was swinging the mic and everything, and, 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 and he, he came up to me after the show, and he goes, really fantastic. He goes, great. You know, and, and, and I said, like, I said, my head just went, That was Ooh. enough. That was enough right there, right? That's a great shot of him with us there, giving yeah. the thumbs up, and then... Yep. So anyway, he's one of my biggest influences yes. ever. I, I think he's that, that that one night made it made it worth the, that. I always keep a video camera on every crummy little gig that I've ever played. In that. It's kind of like you never know when Robert Plant's going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> that would have blown me away. That would have just. Now, I, me I told. Uh, this is more stuff. So be great in here. I'm just sweet. This is Mark Stein's piece saying that when he was all through the fudge, in the beginning of the fudge, all through the boomerang, uh, out of Poland and after that. It was a beat to hell. We fixed it up. He, told, he said Jim Morrison leaned on that, Janis Joplin leaned on that, Jimi Hendrix leaned really? on that. Wow. 
Wow. Um, wow, wow, wow. And I'll tell you, that was some influence for me. I think I was about 15 when that album came out, too. And uh, I remember the Walt Whitman Mall just opened up, and we used to just play that over and over and over. Did you ever see Boomerang live? Who? Boomerang. The guy that did that after the verse? Uh, I don't believe so. Unless it was, I saw him in the village somewhere. Randy, those drums belong to who? That's Carmine. Right. I, I saw that on the Pete Ricky put a picture of that. Oh. But he didn't want to say what Combine's original drums. That's the uh he's working on the new guy himself. You got a different song up? Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Going into the mixing room of the studio. This is amazing. We'll come back in and play a track okay. new track. New track so. All right, you're going to get a little uh, bonus track. So the green in this room has to do, to do videos in here, so we can, do, we can do we can what we we tested it out and it was great. We do live multi-track recording while while we're doing while we're performing live to, be, to a, in front of a green screen and the floor and everything and everything. So then we can put any background we want and it's live, you know, and we can just do it over and over again until we get the take we want, so it's pretty awesome. I'm, uh, I'm going to do that soon. We, we did it with the other singer, but uh, you know, now we're, right. one of the ones that probably is really, yeah, yeah, I mean, she's yeah. getting there real yeah. close. Yeah, this is cool. This is very cool. And actually, Cactus is uh, recording an album down here now, now also, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll go play a track for that. Now. Oh, We've got basic tracks. We've got guitar, bass, and drums. Who gives you stuff like that other than Madhouse TV? Who's who? Who? Nobody. Nobody. This is amazing. Get the ISO rooms the talent that has been in this room. Oh, the Fudge recorded albums here. Mark Stein's solo album here. Uh, the Lizards, all the Lizard Star people. Uh, you know, um, Pat Travers recorded here. Uh, uh, the Cactus is doing our second album here. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. You gotta, as long as you like my taste in music, you know, well, <laughs> you know, you know where we you know where I'm at. It's been it's a rehearsal room and a recording studio, yeah. which isn't that common, but uh, obviously, I, I, at one point, my swimming pool sprang a leak, and I wish I had done this. I had a moment where I could have afforded it. And I said, let's dig the swimming pool up and do double the basement, put a whole nother basement over there, and I could have. Rehearsal theater in one side <laughs> and, and a recording studio in the other. But I, I uh, pulled my singer and said, No, I'd like to go swimming. I said, All right, we'll fix the yeah, pool. <laughs> the pool's good. Now I can't afford to do it. So. <laughs> We're not stopping yet. There's more to go. Just letting you people know you are seeing something that no one gets oh, to say. Good. This is rock and roll history and the greatest rock and roll history you'll ever ever come across right here on Madhouse. Coming into the control room. Uh, these are basic tracks for a new cactus. <laughs>
We're getting the first taste of the, a little bit of the new Cactus album. Come on, who does that for you but Madhouse? You get that right on the Maverick Soul show, that's all I can tell you. You get that nowhere else. And the show's not over. We're moving. We are moving. Thank you, my man. Pleasure. Holy shit. That's all I got to say is holy shit. You'll never see this anywhere else. Oh, I'll tell you that right now. What are you looking at? There uh -oh. we go. All right, that's enough. That's all I can. I can't play anymore. <laughs> they changed the name of the band to Randy and the Guns. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're being forced. At gunpoint. That's Bobby Rondinelli's drum set. That's a Kermit Rondinelli's drum set. <laughs> Bobby Rondinelli, a Long Island boy. Here's his drums. And here's Carmine to pieces. This is from his first album? Yep. From the first album, which to me is one of the greatest albums ever. Ever. Keep me hanging on. Take me for a little while. That changed bass playing forever. I want to check out the pipe work. 